I want to now go to Kurt Nemo of InfoWars.com and Paul Watson of PrisonPlanet.com, both my main editors of those sites. Uh, Kurt, let's, let's tackle Iran first, and then we'll go through all of this, and then Paul, I want to get Paul's take on it. You've written two excellent articles, Building a Pretext for Mass Murder, Iran's Secret Enrichment Facility, and then you read in, the, the U.S. launched the sneak attack on Russia, but they said Russia launched it, and then later they had to admit it was a lie. They said Iraq had WMDs, yellow cake, aluminum tubes. That was a lie. You prove this is just one of many enrichment facilities on record and that this is another huge hoax, just like Iraq, and they only do this, and then now they put out the fake patsies being busted that the FBI created, founded, gave them the bombs, same MO as usual. So they're creating the terror fear again ahead of a staged terror attack. Everything is happening. They're demonizing the patriot gun-owning movement, admitting homeland securities for us, claiming the American people have linked up with al-Qaeda. It doesn't look good, Kurt Nemo. Yeah, it doesn't look good at all. On Friday, uh, uh, Obama went before the G20, flanked by Brown and Sarkozy, and accused Iran of, of uh, building a, a new uh, uranium enrichment plant uh, to produce weapons-grade uranium turns out this is total nonsense. The United States knew about this plant being under construction for two years. And also, Iran doesn't have the capability to, to enrich uranium to 95%, which is needed for weapons grade uh, for bombs. So, in essence, this is just another pretext. Um, you know, the corporate media spun it as, they, you know, they're building an atomic bomb. So it's just more nonsense, you know, getting ready for an attack on Iran. Just like it was later declassified that the girl who testified about seeing Republican Guard throw babies out of incubators turned out she'd never been to Kuwait. Her family owned the big PR firm that was paid to put the story out. Uh, it's, it's, it's just classic. And they wouldn't be going with a lie this big and this bold if they weren't planning to hit Iran. Absolutely. They're planning on hitting it. Also, Debka today reported that, and of course that's a a suspicious uh, news source, but they reported, if you can believe them, that the United States is pro in the process of developing a new bunker buster that's going to be able to take out these, uh, you know, reinforced uh, bunkers. No, no, that, that was admitted six years ago. Uh, that's a McDonnell Douglas, and they have several other big bunker buster, uh, smaller nukes. So, yes. Yeah, and these are nuclear tipped uh, bunker busters, which is pretty scary. Well, you accuse the country of about to nuke people when you nuke them, and all the good old boys get a extension, feel manly through it, even though they can't find it on a map. Then, of course, we'll all breathe that as it rains back down on us. Uh, your article breaks this down. I mean, they've built these things all over the country. They haven't come clean. They said, okay, we finish a new enrichment center. Come inspect as it opened. They've got them all over the country. Uh, this is just another mass lie. Right, and also Iran is not anywhere near bringing this uh, plant online. So they have followed the rules that are set up by the the uh, IAEA as far as under the nuclear uh, the N NPT to um, to come supposedly come clean as, as Obama put. But it. but Israel doesn't clean come clean about its four hundred to eight hundred high tech nukes and submarines and ICBMs to deliver it and cruise missiles. I mean, why can Israel have all this and then no one's supposed to talk about it, but Iran can't have anything? Well, Israel's a preferred client state. They're allowed to do that. In the same way that Pakistan is allowed to do it. Paul Watson, uh Another giant hoax. We need a headline explaining that this is a hoax. Just like they had announced that Russia snuck attack Georgia. I mean, this is a giant hoax. That's right, Alex. I mean, if, if you remember, Obama won the nomination against Hillary by posing as this peacenik because Hillary kept saying in debates how she wanted to go after Iran. And Obama was... Uh, positioning himself as the opposite of that you know he would seek talks with iran he was this ambassador for peace and now he's involved in one of the biggest stage managed and contrived inventions that we've seen in years which is acting as a pretext for hostility against iran you know i mean the fact is that as kurt lays out in his article Obama claimed that Iran was breaking these rules, but under the March 2007 agreement that Iran had with the IAEA, they're not required to report a nuclear 
processing installation when it's been when it's first being constructed. They're only required to report it six months before any nuclear materials are brought onto the site. So Iran reported it, as would be routine, to the IAEA early last week. And then Obama seized upon that as if Iran's cover had been blown and that they were trying to come clean after the fact when they were just reporting it six months before the nuclear material was going to be on site. And the plant itself is 18 months away from even being completed. Obama well, himself knew of the plant's existence, that it was being built straight after he got elected in January, and the U.S. has been aware of it since 2006. So they choose the G20, they choose this moment, and by the way, it's right on the eve of talks with Iran, so Obama's, you know, characteristic as this statesman, this ambassador has been blown wide open again. Well, just like last time, I want to talk about that when we come back, he says... I want to be friends with you right when they launch the CIA destabilization. He says, I want to be your friend. And they go, okay, we're, we're going to open this plant. And they go, oh, my God, we found a secret plant. Then you read down deeper, it says Iran announced it. I mean, it's just, but, but just like the public loves to be lied to about how the banks were going to use the bailout money to unfreeze the mortgages, and then they get the money and say they're not going to day one. It's all about hoaxes, all about giant lies. Stay there. Uh, let's talk about the timetable for hitting Iran. Israel says they can do it any time now. God help us. Your call's coming up in the next segment, 1-800-259-9231. Kurt Nemo, Paul Watson, whoever wants to go first can. From all these hundreds of articles that we've been reading and scanning the last few weeks, the announcements, Israel saying they're getting ready to attack, Israel doing drills to attack, Clearly, they're beating the drums just like they did up until March 2003 with the strike on Iraq. The same folks that lied about WMDs there are now doing it here, but not worried about Pakistan, who the West actually gave nukes to, and delivery systems. They want to go into Iran more than anything just as a political cover for devaluing the dollar here. Because as long as they devalue the dollar while we're in a war, people will wave flags and say, great, I'm glad I'm going bankrupt. Uh, the RAND Corporation talked about that, didn't they, Paul? Yeah, that was about a year ago. They said we want a major new war, you know, to get the weapons trade flowing again. And uh, we've been talking about this for years, but as Kurt mentioned, the um, massive ordnance penetrator, the nuclear-tipped bunker buster, they're reporting now that it's been uh, brought forward by no less than three years, and that it indicates, quote, the Obama administration has been preparing military muscle to back up the international condemnation of Iran. So they're getting, they're getting ready for the sanctions. As you oh, said, Israel's fine. got those too. They, what was it, two years ago, ordered, I want to say 50 of them? I mean, this is, of course they have bunker-busting mini-nukes. No, it's the, it's the first 15-ton super bunker-buster bomb, so it's just a bigger version. Oh. Because it allows them to get a, reach a depth of 60 meters, according to this article, before exploding. So they're just beefing up the weapon systems. Um, and I don't think that we've said all along they can't do it without some kind of major provocation. Um, you had Robert Bear on the show about, a, well, two years ago now, who said that they could launch an attack inside the United States the Saudis could launch it in a false flag and blame it on Iran, which seems to line up with everything we're seeing, especially with um, the CIA front intel center now saying that because uh, bin Laden said something on an audio tape, which is completely ridiculous within itself if you study who's behind it, that uh, an imminent al-Qaeda attack is to be expected. And then the oh, FBI goes out and finds former prisoners, leads them, gives them cell phones, money, and fake bombs, and busts them at the same time, clearly to coincide with the G20 and the Iran situation. And uh, going back to Saudi Arabia with Israel, with the U.S., setting up al the, the Taliban and al-Qaeda and Charlie Wilson's war, which is a whitewash, but that part is true, 
Uh, it's the same M.O. That's why the hijackers were known Saudi intelligence, according to Mr. Springman of the U.S. Embassy, and ordered to come over here and set up, thinking they were taking part in drills. Saudi Arabia always helps stage attacks to go after its enemy, Iran and Iraq. It's very, very, I, I agree with Bear when he said that a year and a half ago. We should repost that, Paul.